We're back with Simone Cruer, the demo diva for our next edition of Demolishing Barriers brought to you by Scott Equipment. So Simone, welcome back and who are we meeting today? We are meeting Karen Roy, Miss Wheelchair America, if you can believe there is such a thing. And it is all based on advocacy. So she's got a fantastic story. Wonderful. And this story is truly inspirational. Take a look. I am here with Miss Wheelchair America, and I never knew there was such a thing, Karen. Congratulations, you Thank are you. the 2019 title holder. How did you win this title, and what was the platform that you ran on to win this title? So Miss Wheelchair America is different from other competitions like that. It's not a beauty contest. It's completely based off of your history of advocacy. I really love the idea of, of what this is, is that it's not just about beauty. Even though you say, <laughs> don't, that don't us underestimate my vanity. <laughs> I yeah. love that. Yeah, the reason that this is my platform, my platform is Miss Wheelchair Louisiana and then eventually as Miss Wheelchair America was all about the technology that's kept me healthy. And I, the doctors told me in the very beginning, they said, you know, honey, why do you even want that standing stuff and all that? You're not going to use it. It's not going to make you walk again. And I said, don't underestimate my vanity. I was like, <laughs> if I can keep my legs looking good, you have no idea the depths that I will go to to make that happen. I've never had a wound or fracture or contracture in 31 years of paralysis because of the technology that I that use. That is phenomenal. I wanted all of that technology. It's not covered by insurance, so I've spent many years advocating for through with doctors and other people with spinal cord injuries about that they needed to promote this equipment, they needed to get this equipment, um, but wearing a crown seemed to have a magical effect, and um, that got me to um, where I could use the platform to spread that message around Louisiana, and then after I ended up winning, I was able to spread it across the country. Can you tell us about the night? What happened that, that fateful yeah. night? Um, so my boyfriend and I went to an LSU football game and he played guitar, wanted to go to this blues place called Tabby's Blues Box in Baton Rouge. And we had listened to music, we were leaving, my car had been broken into. And when I noticed the car had been broken into, I said, well, I guess we should call the police. At that point, somebody snuck up from behind me and behind my boyfriend, put gun to his head and put, um, Somebody grabbed my shoulders, hit me over the head with the gun, took my purse with my $2 in it, and then shot me in the back. And All over $2. Yeah, yeah. So that caused a punctured lung, and I was paralyzed from the waist down, and then um, almost bled to death. And luckily, obviously didn't, made it to, to the trauma center, and then to rehab, and kind of learn how to live my life again. This is literally like a month before I got shot. So I like looking, I'm like, oh, look at my legs, like they work. <laughs> Once I got stabilized, so it was probably a good several days after um, that I realized I was gonna live, uh, they said, you'll never walk again. And I said, okay, well, can I still have children? And they said, yes. Did you feel the sensation of every bur of the of the movie? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So internally, oh. there's um, all of that was was the happiest times of my life. I think when feeling um, being pregnant and and going through all of that. So uh, and then the babies. You know, people have asked me like, how did you parent in a wheelchair? Honestly, you get really good at like grabbing a piece of their clothing and getting to them. Um, I think that people think that they can run away from you. I mean, they can only get so far. <laughs> took that moment to make pivotal changes in my life and to pretty much um, try to reinvent myself. 
And I also realized that my kids were all at the age where the last one was about to go to college and I was now a widow and I had a lot more time on my hands for advocacy. So I got to take what was um, a small advocacy, like one-on-one -on -one with people as a social worker and kind of amplify that on a national level. That's when I decided to do Miss Wheelchair Louisiana um, was after the death of my husband. So wearing a crown got me all the way to DC multiple times and in front of people who are decision makers about standing technology and the things that I am passionate about. You had to speak to someone right now who's listening and tell, they're in a wheelchair and they're a young person looking out at it life. What would you say? I would say that you, your life will be beautiful if you want it to be. You get to make that choice. So something that might have been meant for evil can be made to be a beautiful thing. Oh my gosh, what a tearjerker. I, I mean, know. this is amazing story, amazing she's managed to stay positive through this Yeah, she, you know, I think that one of the things that she told me when we went to lunch is that she said evil things happen to good people, but this has given her a platform to have a voice that maybe she would have never had otherwise. And so those, I think, out of something so tragic has come something so good. Wonderful, all right, thank you, Simone. So if you would like to share someone's story with Simone, you can email us at greatday at wwltv.com.